Welcome to The Awakening, Black Women United. I am your host, Sherry Danny. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and hit the notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. Thank you for watching this video until the end. How I Lost Half of My Family and I Still Carry On I was listening to the comedian Ali Siddiq in one of his comedy shows talk about how black people do not express loss and grief, and that made me think of my own story. I create content every week but have never told my story. Why? Because it is not easy to open up in a country such as America that does not give a damn about you if you are poor, black, or a woman. From the south side of Chicago, we are taught early on in life not to cry, hide your pain, keep calm, and carry on. But when do we, as black people and black women in particular, get to be human, feel pain, express loss, and say, I cannot take this anymore. I need a break. So here it goes. This is my story. Sherry Danny, born and raised on the south side of Chicago, from the same neighborhood as Lil Durk, Englewood. When I was young, my maternal grandparents raised me because my mom and dad, who were married, yes, married, were both heroin addicts and were constantly in and out of jail. I always say my childhood is akin to if Bonnie and Clyde had a daughter and a son. My grandfather died when I was 14, then my grandmother died when I was 16. That was two huge blows. But you know, they were old, both born in the early 1900s. Then my uncle died, then my aunt. I was in my late 20s and early 30s, mind you. My grandmother had 11 children, and we used to be a very close-knit family, like I said used to be. That was painful, but in 2015, the storm of loss came until February of 2024. In October 2015, my younger brother passed away at 35 years old. He was epileptic since he was six years old, and this day his heart could no longer take it. Bye, baby brother. You have now gone somewhere I cannot follow. I got to have a three-year break from grief and loss. Oh, but the wind began to howl, the rain came in, and the storm reached the shore, and the roller coaster of death and loss began again. 2018, my stepfather died in the bed with my mom. Oh, by the way, my dad Clyde died when I was 17, and yes, my heroin addict mother remarried. Yes, my stepdad was a crack addict until the last five years of his life. Then he was clean and sober and working 16-hour days. But previously, he had two heart attacks and a mild stroke. This morning, his heart gave out after coming home from his shift. Oh yes, my older cousin, who was like a big brother to me, passed away from kidney failure. I had to back up. My cousin's wife called me on my way to work and said he had his procedure, but he would not wake up. I tried to call off, but I was a security guard. My supervisor said she could not get anyone to cover my shift, so I had to work it. But in the morning, at 7 a.m., I drove to the hospital in Indiana. His wife was there and my aunts had just left, I was told. Within 30 minutes, his children and his sister came. Then the doctor came in and told us that he was brain dead. I remember being at his funeral on the west side of Chicago. It's strange how some of the family members who were at his funeral are gone now. Some passed away shortly after him, such as my stepdad. He was at my cousin's funeral, but six weeks later, he died in his sleep. Then my uncle, my aunt's husband, died in the bed at the house. My mom attended his funeral to support her sister, and four weeks later, my mom died too. After my mom passed away, I needed a break. I quit my job. And through all of this, I had three children, a teenager and two little ones. I went to college in the day from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and worked security from 3 p.m. to 11 at night, five days a week. And I handled it like it was nothing until they passed away. I cried and cried and would not stop crying. My childhood friend told me to get bereavement counseling. The only job I could handle was Uber Eats. My children are homeschooled, so that helped. I got my daughter to graduate from high school at 16. Then my other cousin, who I talk to almost every day, who, when my mother died, made my other cousins take me out to a bar after my mom's memorial and said to them, hey, I think Sherry is still sad. Let's take her out. I loved her so much for that. Well, in 2021, after I had gained the strength to re-enter the world and go back to college, she called me one day saying that her stomach was hurting so much so that she went to the hospital. 
They told her fluid had filled up in her stomach because her kidneys had failed. Then, two weeks later, when she was still in pain, they told her that her cervical cancer from 23 years ago had returned. I was in the process of writing my thesis, and yes, at my school as a history major, you have to write at least a 25 to 20 page thesis with 40 citations. Woo! I say that because I know most schools and programs do not make undergrads write a thesis. Anyway, I would call her every day from school on my breaks and check on her. She went back and forth to the hospital every two weeks, getting blood transfusions and taking chemotherapy. Now, before this, when my stepdad and the others passed away before my mom, I attended school until the semester was over. One of the hardest parts was my little sister and mother would both call me at 7 in the morning as I was getting ready, wanting to talk about our passed on loved ones. I would talk to them until 8, sometimes 5 minutes more. Then I would tell them, I have to go, I have to go to class. It was always a goal of mine to get my bachelor's degree, and I decided that I was not going to let anything stop me. And yes, it was difficult, especially because my cousin who passed away from kidney failure, he and I attended school together. I sucked at math, and he said the next semester he would take the class with me. He had been in some of the school plays, and every morning I had to walk past the theater and remember him, and remember how we did not get to take that class together. Now back to my cousin with cancer. So, I learned how to carry on. When I had my 18-month break from life after my mom died and my friend told me to get bereavement counseling, I did not go. I was too sad to go, yes, if that is even a thing, but that's how I felt. And I did not realize how depressed I was until I was no longer as sad and returned to school. Well, the Southside Chicago girl did good. I graduated in 2022 with my bachelor's degree in U.S. history and a minor in global studies from the College of Arts and Sciences from the Division of Arts and Letters in the Discipline of History. My cousin was so proud of me, but she was too ill to attend my graduation. From there, I obtained a position as a social studies teacher, instructing U.S. history, world history, geography, anthropology, okay, just all of the social sciences. I would send her money when I could, even before I had a job. And then the bottom crashed out. She got worse and worse. And on February 20th, 2024, she passed away. Let me go back again. My cousin who died from kidney failure, one year after his passing, his wife passed, and six months later, his three-year-old granddaughter passed away. Needless to say, after my cousin passed away from kidney failure, I stopped attending the funerals. I was not going to watch another person I loved and hung out with all the time, people who let me know I was worth the universe and all the stars in the sky, be lowered in the ground and damn sure not a three-year-old. Also, in 2023, my younger cousin who made a song with the infamous rapper FBG Duck passed away in a tragic car accident on the Dan Ryan Expressway. Mind you, I did not know who Duck was really until my cousin passed away because I'm not a fan of Chicago drill music. Now back to my cousin with the cancer. I did not attend her funeral either. Some of you may not understand or think my actions were harsh. How can I say I love these people so much and did not attend their funerals? Because it's just not mentally healthy. I have to live and grief will take you with them. I have myself and three children to live for. I am thankful that, living in Chicago thus far, none of my family members have passed from gun violence. Sometimes I listen to Celine Dion and I say to all of them that their hearts will go on in me and I shed a tear, but I carry on. Or I think about that scene from Game of Thrones. This is to the ones who went before us, and the ones who went before them, whose like we will never see again. I think about our hour-long conversations and their smiles and laughs. I know they would not want me to fall or fail or grieve myself to death. And sometime next year, I will start working on my master's degree. Because my goal is to get my PhD in international relations and be Dr. Sherry Danny. Thank you for listening today on how I lost half of my family and carried on. If you or someone you know is suffering from loss, don't be ashamed to get therapy and seek help. This is my story. This has been The Awakening. Black Women United. I am your host, Sherry Danny. 
Subscribe, like, share, comment, and hit the notification so you know every time I upload a new video.